Psalm 138, verse 2. Go. Okay. It says, For you, <coughs> I will worship you, I will worship toward your holy temple, and praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. For you have magnified your word above all your name. Uh, that might not shock you, but that shocked me. I was amazed that that was in the Bible. I think I saw it the first time when we were in Weimar. And I was amazed then. And then when, when we came here, uh, I was amazed again. I came in across it and, and saw that and started putting that on every bulletin. We were making bulletins in that God would honor, lift up. You have magnified your word above all your name. Uh, God thinks a lot of his name. Apparently he thinks more of his word. In fact, he thinks so much of it that he said, heaven and earth may pass away, but my word shall never pass away. We're going to have it in heaven. Why are we going to leave it in heaven? Because it's important. When we die, and the Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die, and after that the judgment. And we're all going to die. Every single one of us. Nobody is accepted. And we're going to have God's word in heaven. Can you get saved without God's word? No. Can you get saved without Jesus? No. It's impossible. Unless you have asked the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your heart and he has come in and changed you, you cannot go to heaven. That's pretty important, isn't it? <laughs> Whether you know it or not, that is very important. God says, I would that none should perish, but that all should come unto repentance. That every single person, the guy that you don't like, that lady that ticks you off, uh, every single person, God wants to go to heaven. And he's made it possible for that to happen. And he wants us to know what he thinks about his word. Uh, God wants his word to be in our hearts. God wants us to read it for ourselves. It's not a good thing to come and hear a sermon or hear somebody read the Word of God and say, oh, that's good. God wants us to take it into our heart, to hide it in our heart. That's my life verse. That word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. I hope you have a life verse. If you don't, I hope you think of about one. Think about getting one. One that God puts on your heart. One that puts in your heart. One that he puts in your mind that will remind you from time to time and as constantly as possible what it is that God wants you to know of his word. It's important. He says right here it's important, doesn't he? He says that it is very important. I'm going to read it again. You've still got it up there. You have magnified your word above all your name. Well, that sounds pretty important to me. It, it sounded important to me the first time I saw it. And I'd read the Bible many times before that. But somehow I just kind of skipped through that and didn't register to me. But God wants us to know his word. That's why every Sunday that we have a, and that's usually every Sunday, that we have a message that someone reads the scripture and preaches on it. God wants us to comprehend what that is. But you can't comprehend what that is by listening to a preacher, I promise you. Now the Bible says, 
Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And that's what we're supposed to do. And so that's what we do. We've done that several times this morning already. The word of God has gone out. People have heard it. And hopefully it'll get into our hearts. And we'll remember it. Sometimes in the middle of the night. God has a habit. Because I don't do things during the day. He has a habit of waking me up. At two or three o'clock in the morning. And reminding me of something that he told me to do. Or someone he told me to pray for. And I didn't do it. And so he has a way of getting my attention when it's not somewhere else. Some of us have a, a habit of uh, nodding our head and shaking our head. And saying, yeah, I understand, I understand. But we really don't understand. God wants us to get his word in our heart. He wants us to hear it. He wants us to, for it to seep in and to seep into our brain and realize how important his word is. If it's important enough that it's going to be in heaven forever for those who've been saved now those who aren't in heaven aren't going to get that. But those of us who are going to heaven are going to have the word of God forever from now on and he wants us to realize that and to make it important in our daily lives um, just make a little note like Josh said maybe write it on your notes uh, about how important the word of God is why why we preach on some of the scriptures that we preach on. It's because it's in our Bible reading every week. Some of you don't know, but we have a Bible reading every week. Uh, some chapters. And sure enough, when Sunday gets here, we preach on them. Or one of them, or two of them, or three of them. Because it's important. It's important for you to get the Word of God in your heart. It's important for me. That's why I couldn't believe it the first time I saw that. And I said, where did that come from? That I've never seen that scripture before. Well, I had. Whether I went over it quickly or slowly or however I went over it, I didn't get it. But God wanted me to read that and to know what he thought about his Word. He thinks very highly of his word. He wants us to think highly of his word. He wants us to get his word in our heart, in our mind, in the things that we do every day, in the, in the situations that we aren't expecting. Were you expecting that situation, Brother Josh? No. Wasn't expecting it. You probably were expecting another smart word out of her mouth. Right. And that's what we Christians are supposed to be ready for. Bad days. Bad days that other people are having. That maybe we can say a word or maybe several words. Or we can share a scripture. Or we can pray with someone. Um, even though we give out lots of groceries, that is not the most important thing we do. The most important thing we do, whether it's the workers or whether it's the, the clients, the most important thing we do is offer them an opportunity to pray. If they will stop and they have to pull out a line and come to the side and purposely want to pray. We don't harass them to pray. pray. We've been accused of that sometime. One, one time a lady went to the food bank and said, you know, down there at uh, Red Rock, Grace, says they make us get down on our knees and bow at their feet and pray. So the lady at the food bank called me up and she was kind of laughing. She says, I know this is not true. She says, but here's what they're telling about you. I said, well, I probably would think of that, but no, we don't do that. 
She says, I was pretty sure you didn't do that. Because that wouldn't have any effect, would it? If we forced them to come pray. But if we give them an opportunity to pray, and many do. One time I... I uh, kept track of how many people were were getting prayed for. I don't think I got an accurate result because we got more interested in praying than than we were, than I was in trying to keep track. Uh, but God has people come and actually give thanks. Say, I want to pray. Okay, pray. Well, I want to pray and thank the Lord for giving us food. Now, Sometimes, you know, it's not as needed and, and we have people that try to steal our food. We've had people break into the food pantry, even though they can come every Friday, every single Friday and get free food. And even sometimes if, if they're especially in need of something, they'll ask, can I have some extra bread? And if we have it, we give it to them. But people will come and break into our food pantry, knock the wind out, climb in. Uh, they only got two chickens, and so they wanted three or four, and steal them. And a turkey. And a turkey. <laughs> you remembered the turkey. Uh, and yet, God loves them. And yet, God wants us to love them. And sometimes we don't want to love them, do we? Sometimes we don't want to give them some grace when that's exactly what they needed. Well, that gal needed some grace, didn't she? Yep. God, God has a way of speaking to us. If God has never spoken to you, I can tell you, you're in trouble. God will speak to you. He'll reveal things to you through the Word of God, through other Christians, through circumstances, uh, all kinds of ways. God will speak to us. Now, I've never heard Him speak audibly, but boy, it's been so close that uh, I looked around to see if there was someone in the room with me. Uh, he wants us to hear Him. He wants us to know what it is he has in store for us. He wants us to know what we're supposed to be doing. Uh, as servants of the Lord, as people who have been saved, who have been born again, who know the Lord Jesus Christ, he wants us to hear what he wants us to do. Have you ever heard from the Lord? Have you ever heard from the Lord? Boy, I hope so. If we can't hear from the Lord, how are we going to know what to do? How are we going to know how to, to obey the Lord? Here are some things that I put down in preparation. Preparation to minister, in preparation to be ready for whatever God wants you to do. Here's, here's what they are. Humble ourselves. God has a number of things to say in the Bible about being humble or being not humble. Uh, you don't get very far with God if you want to hear from Him if you're not humble. He wants you to humble yourself. He wants me to humble myself. Some of us have more of a problem with that than others, but God wants us to be humble before Him. He wants us to listen to Him. If you don't do anything else in your Christian life but learn how to hear from God, boy, well, you've accomplished a lot. Listen to God. Listen for God. Now, He's made it real simple for me. He just wakes me up at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning when I was snoozing nicely and speaks to me and then I'm wide awake oh that's what you told me to do early this morning and I didn't do it 
God wants us to hear him. Secondly, obey God. Uh, God told me to do something this morning when I was sitting at home. You all know that I can't walk very well. Sometimes not at all. And God told me, I want you to walk today. Now, I don't know how far I'm going to get. But I'm going to do my best to walk. Uh, people have been praying for me. And praying for me and praying for me. And I've prayed for me and my wife's prayed for me. And I still haven't been able to walk other than have a rollator or something like that to, to help me along. I'm probably going to go to this corner and then try to make it to that chair. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do yet because I haven't planned my moves. Uh, it may be get somebody to pick me up off the floor. I hope that's not it. But I know that God told me very clearly Matter of fact, what he really told me was, was to tell my wife, and I didn't tell her. He says, tell your wife that you're going to walk today. But I didn't tell her. And then I got in here and I said, or the Lord said to me, tell Ted. I said, oh no, then I'll be obligated. I don't want to tell Ted. Maybe you could just whisper to someone, and if they don't hear it, well, that'll be all right. No, that's cheating, isn't it? Uh, so I'm going to attempt to walk. No, I'm not going to attempt to walk. I'm going to walk. And I'll tell you when, so don't be looking. Uh, God wants us to obey him and then God wants us to put on the whole armor of God one of the things that my wife and I do is when we pray uh, we kind of prepare to pray if you're not prepared to pray you're probably not going to pray too good and one of the things that we do is to read about the armor of God and I'm going to read it to you out of the book of Ephesians, the sixth chapter, in the uh, tenth verse. Does she have that? Does she have it up there? Okay. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God. <clears throat> able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Typically before we pray for someone or something uh, we put on our armor. That may sound like a funny thing to you but we've learned that it's not a funny thing. It's a necessary thing. It's an important thing. It's important to memorize verses uh, some of us don't memorize as well as others. But God wants us to memorize as far as pos possible. We have some little cards that we carry around with us. And there's eight or ten verses in there of, of uh, things that we believe are important for us to know. That we can prepare to pray for someone. That we can prepare to, to obey the Lord and do in. One of them is wherever two or more of you can agree on anything on earth. God wants it to pray. Now, two is not too many, is it? 
but he specifically said two two or more if you can just agree two people it's all this has to dis, has to do agree and it says and my father in heaven who hears you will give you the desire the the thing that you ask for he wants us to agree he wants to give us he wants to to bless us he wants us to know what it is in his plan for our lives he wants us to not forget that and it's so simple isn't it now who do you think I'd pray with don't know my wife we can pray pretty easily most of the time together we're close proximity to each other we know what it is that we're asking for and we can pray now he doesn't say and I'll caution you on this don't say to God when you're praying and God would you hurry up here's what the Bible says wait on the Lord and again I say wait who do you think is more important God or us we think we are God hurry up I need this and I need it now well I think that's a good way to get cut off I think that's a good way of just stretching out whatever God was going to do for you he wants us to hear him and he wants us to be willing to wait are you a good waiter who's a good waiter in here I was the only one that had my hand up I'm not a good waiter but God wants us to wait on him who's the most important person in the world the Lord Jesus Christ that's what that verse was saying a while ago Jesus is important we think we are we think our time is of a premium we think that that we can just tell God what and tell him to hurry up and he'll run it right out that's not so God wants us to wait on him he wants us to learn patience he wants us to learn to be obedient to do what he tells us to do and he will bless us if we'll do that that is so important yes oh I didn't finish that verse 15 oh yes I did quit too soon didn't I and having shod your feet verse 15 I'm seeing verse 15 okay stand therefore having gird your waist with truth having put on the breastplate of righteousness having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all taking the shield of faith with which you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit God makes it very plain what we're supposed to do if we read his word if we pay attention to his word if we obey his word and boy it makes it a whole lot simpler to hear from God and to know what he wants us to do how many of you in here know what your spiritual gifts are one one two three four five six seven God wants us to know what our spiritual gifts are not that, so that we can show them off so that when we're in need of them we can use them you know what your spiritual gifts are 
used to know. Okay. Well, I know Brother Ted knows mine probably better than I do. I, I know that God has given me the gift of faith. And I don't use it like I should. Uh, if you look in the Bible, most everything that's associated with God and Him using us has to do with faith. If we don't have faith, we don't have it. We're not going to get it. He has forced us to use faith or not be able to operate in the realms that he wants us to operate in. We have to have faith. How do we get faith? How do we get anything? Ask and you will, shall receive. God wants us to have faith. You say, well, I, I, I don't know how to get faith. Ask and keep asking. God will give you faith. He will give you the things that you need. He even tells us that he'll give us the desires of our heart. How do we get the desires of our heart, Brother Ted? Ask. Ask. Delight in the Lord. How do you delight in the Lord? Well, ask him. He'll show you how to delight in him. Or if you don't want anything, don't. Don't delight in him. Delight in your best television program. Delight in the movie. Delight in your car. Delight in your house. You can do that, but it's not recommended. But if you want the desires of your heart, do you know the desires of your heart? God wants you, and guess who put those desires in there? God did. And if you want those, delight in the Lord. I just want to testify this morning. Testimony is absolutely amazing, and God has commanded us basically to testify to one another, to talk to one another about the stuff that we're going through, because the stuff we're going through is the stuff you're going through. So it really builds people up. It lets people know that that you're not the only one going through things. Um, the, in Revelation it says they overcome the evil one by the word of their testimony and by the blood of the Lamb. So it's very important that we testify. Uh, last week we, we sat down and had a little meeting amongst ourselves about the food pantry and some things that have been happening at food pantry. Some disorder a little bit. Uh, that happens for lack of vision. The people perish, the Bible says. So we need to... Uh, it's my fault. Uh, you know, I prayed before I left that morning. I asked God to give me the exact words to cause community, to cause work, to cause encouragement, not to come up and be some voice of authority and everybody has to listen to me. That, that causes zero work. It'll get you in trouble. Uh, so I, I did pray. I asked God to give me the words to speak to some of these men. For, there's verses. God puts so many verses in my mind when I start thinking about things. These are older men. There's a verse in the Bible that says, Do not rebuke an older man, but exhort him as a father. That, that word exhort means to strongly encourage. So I'm to come and strongly encourage them, but also correct some things. To also make sure some things get done that are kind of, you know, people get complacent. I'm, I'm like Paul. If you think you're complacent, I, I promise you, I'm, I'm more so. I get a little sideways. God has to correct me, for sure. So I came up, I spoke to a, a couple people, but I spoke to this one certain individual that we knew we wanted to kind of rein in just a little bit. Uh, and he sometimes is off the wall a little. You know, sometimes he'll, get, he'll react wrong. But God prepared it exactly right. And uh, I spoke with him. He received me. I was amazed at how he received what I was telling him. Uh, I was grateful. Uh, but again, I came doing what God had told me to do to speak. To, first off, we want to encourage that person. We want to put them higher than ourselves. We want to give them place. Uh, we don't want to tower over people. We don't want to act like I'm better than you or you know, something like that. We're a family. Uh, 
God has also asked, asked me to implement that and talk about that at Pantry as well. We're a family here. We're a family at Pantry. We're to love each other. We're to care for each other. If a problem arises, God has built people up to help those problems out and to, to do it right. To do it right, not to uh, mess things up by getting arrogant or violent or, you know, acting like we know what we're talking about. I'm the king of that, I'm telling you. Uh, and I'm going to tell you I'm going to tell you what happened after that. That was great. Everything worked out there great. I helped out in the food pantry line for a little while and then I noticed some people were blocking the the house over here and this guy gets totally mad. We've had signs made for that guy. We've put them around the community wherever there's driveways that people block that the people get mad. We put a sign in Spanish and English and it says do not block driveway. Don't ask me how to say that in Spanish because I don't know but it says it in Spanish and English. So I see the cars blocking over there. I go over there and, and you know I'm a Sometimes I'm a hammer, and when I see a nail, I have to hit that nail, and that's just the way it is. And uh, God has prepared me to, to also be that guy if I need to be in a situation um, to be stern, to be commanding. Uh, so when I get over there, I say, hey, you know, we're not supposed to block this driveway. There's a sign right here. You guys back up or go forward and remember next week not to block this driveway. We've got, I kept telling him, this guy gets very mad at us. He comes and yells at us, and we want to make sure we're not blocking his driveway. So I get this uh, little black car. There's a little Hispanic girl in the car, and she blocks the driveway. So I get out of my truck. I'm parked over there with my flashes on. Uh, I'm very intimidating. I have a, a black vest on. With a, I'm wearing a gun at the time. And uh, I say, ma'am, you're blocking this driveway. I need you to move up. There's a sign right there that says, don't block driveway. She said, well, what if I don't move? And I said, well, I could send you home if you want. Uh, no, stop. <laughs> I said, I could send you home if you want. And uh, she said, well, what if I don't even, I'm just going to stay right here. I said, well, we can call the police if you'd like. Uh, so uh, I don't remember what exactly happened after that. But she, at some point she said, does this make you feel good? And I said, I feel great, you know. So I just went back and sat in the truck and she, she pulled off. I wanted to end that conversation and, and some of my guys showed up to help and they were talking to me. And so she pulls off. I think she, I'm sitting there so long right in the traffic, I think I see her pull by and I didn't even look at her. Right, I see her coming out of the side by the store there and I, I, I stick it's that black car and I'm like, all right, I'm not even going to look at her. I don't want to engage anymore. Uh, but she didn't. So. She, she didn't leave. She was still in line. So I, I'm done there. I go back to help at the food pantry line. Well, here she comes through the food pantry line, and she's pulling up. I'm on this side. She says, hey, you talking to me. I'm like, all right, here we go. So I go around. She's crying. She said, I am so sorry. Would you please forgive me? I'm just having a bad day. I said, I figured you were having a bad day. Everybody has a bad day. I said, they're, they're praying for folks right over here. Her name is Elizabeth. Y'all you know, keep her in Keep her in your prayers. Obviously, there's something going on in her life. There's something going on in our life. Sometimes when people are acting up, most of the time, it's because something's going on in their life. Uh, and they, they, they've got all that going on. Then they have a rough situation, and they don't know how to handle that situation. Like I said, I'm the king of it. So um, <clears throat> anyway, I asked her if she wanted to pull over into the prayer line. I said, Pastor, and then we're praying for everybody over there. Would you like to pull over there and get prayed for? And she said, uh, no, I'm busy. So, so I told Monty, I said, let's just go ahead and pray for her right now. So we prayed for her. And like I said, she's bawling. She's, she's got a lot going on. She has things going on. First off, we have to remember that people are all going through something. We all are. Uh, I come here to church. I put this face on. I put this attitude on. Uh, you know, and, 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 sometimes, and, and, it, and it could be somewhat of fakeness or it could be somewhat of, you know, Jesus said, put on love. So we have to put on love sometimes. We have to put these things on and act accordingly. But we're all hurting in some ways and we all deal with that in some ways. So um, isn't that weird though? You know, we, we have a set of how do we deal with people. We're to be caring and kind and loving and this and that. But also sometimes when we're, you know, I'm, I wasn't mean to her. I was just very stern uh, and that did work. That pulled out what it should have pulled out. She needed prayer. She needed to let that go. She needed to let that out. Uh, it felt really good for her, I'm sure, to let that out and to let that go. But it didn't come through so humble person. It didn't come through me going, oh, ma'am, would you please, um, please, you know, all this. I was stern. Uh, I was a firefighter. We ran traffic, and I learned from that. When you're running traffic, you, ha you cannot be just so humble and so. You have to say, you, here, 
go there. You know, it has to be that way. If people have respond to that, it's authority. So out of that authority and, and craziness came something that was really amazing and somebody got some prayer and somebody got healed, I believe. So really awesome moment. I, I, I've been missing these moments. I really have. And, and most weeks in the past, I will get my phone out and I'll make sure. I've got a little, and I've got hundreds of them by now, test. I just put test on there on a note. And then all week I'll just write things in there that I want to talk about or something that God has done. God has done, you know, I, I got one thing, but I'm telling you there's 9,000 of them this week. There's, there's many of them in your life this week or next week. God is doing amazing, great things. And we could sit there all day at the end of our day, middle of our day, periodically, hour by hour during the day and write things down that God has done for us. And it, it will really blow your mind. It really will. We forget so much about what God has done for us. Uh, an example, many of them. Uh, I, I've had people that I don't even know that, that I didn't even know the person, I don't think, but they'll come up and they'll say, hey, Josh, you remember what you did for me way back then? And I'll be like, I don't, I don't, even, I don't even remember you. Uh, that has happened to me so many times, or, or God will remind me of things through a circumstance that he has done for me and I forgot about. It causes us to really be more, more grateful to God. And so, so I want to encourage you this week to take your phone. If you've got a, a message app on, I mean a note app, Write testimony on there, and then as you go through your day, remember those things that happened to you and write those things down under that testimony. Then when you come to church, we'll, we'll, we'll all be blessed by hearing what you have. Amen? Thank you, guys. Today, we're going to talk about a sweet aroma. Just what y'all are smelling, sweet aroma. It smells like your bubble bath. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does anybody know what a, an aroma is? What's the definition of aroma? Anybody? Any any ideas of what is aroma? Ida? What do you think an aroma is? It, you're the it's, that's it smells like bubble bath in your hand yes okay well an aroma is a distinctive agreeable fragrance or scent it's a distinctive agreeable fragrance or scent can you name some good aromas name be thinking a moment of a sweet a sweet smell that you like Banana bread. Brownies. Banana bread is a sweet smell, yes. Brownies. When, brownies. Cookies. When, when your mother is baking sweets. Brownies. Okay, brownies. only one each. Niall? Brownies. Well, that's already mentioned. Another one. A sweet. Cotton candy. Cotton candy. Okay. Marshmallows. Marshmallows. <laughs> Leave that. <laughs> Banana bread. <laughs> But what is what what smell do you think of when you think of a good smell? Okay, okay, that's good. All right. Well, I think of something baking too. When I bake fresh homemade bread, oh, that smells so good. And people come into my kitchen and they say, mm, "That smells so good. When is it going to be ready? I want to eat it." Lila. Fried chicken? That smells good too. All this is eating, isn't it? And and another another one that I like is clean laundry. Clean laundry hanging on the line. Sheets hung out in the sunshine and then put on the bed. Oh, it makes your bed smell so good. So we're going to read this scripture. And it's it mentions a sweet smelling odor. That, the, that, that speaks of God smelling a good aroma. And that is found in Philippians 4, 18 and 19. Indeed, now this is Paul, the Apostle Paul. Lila, Lila, don't do that. It, this is the Apostle Paul speaking, and he's writing, and it, he says, Indeed, I have 
I have all and abound. I am full, having received from the fighter. Uh, David, help me. If, uh, the uh, Paul's Paul's uh, helper. If that, and I had it down. <laughs> if that, that's it. Keep that thought, Ted. Okay, let me start over. No, no, don't start over. <laughs> the thing sent from you, a sweet smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well pleasing to God. And then he says, and my God shall supply all your need according to his riches by Christ Jesus. So, the Apostle Paul has received from... What's his name again? Brother Tim. He's received from this man, his, his, good, his good helper. The, uh, the Philippian church has sent to the Apostle Paul an offering or food. It doesn't say, but they have sent him an offering to bless him. And he is, he is very thankful for their offering. And he is asking God to bless them. So the Philippian church supplied and met Paul's needs. Even though they were known as a poor church, they denied themselves in order to give to their brother Paul. Paul was believing God to repay and supply their, that church's needs according to God's riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So when we obey God and are obedient to what He tells us to do, these, these deeds are like what? A what? A sweet aroma that goes up to the Lord, our Father in heaven. So, let me give you an example. Yesterday, we had two men from this church that came to our home and cleared out some brush that was on the right of way around our corner because they were afraid that we would be hit by another car when we were coming straight into our entrance. A car would come around this corner because it was trees all along the road. So they came with a trailer and chainsaws and weed eaters and they cut down these trees that were interfering with our, with our uh, sight because we couldn't see cars because of the trees. Now, I think that the Lord was very well pleased with that. And it was like a sweet aroma that y'all smell in your hand. A sweet aroma that went up to our Father God and it pleased Him that they were obedient to do kind deeds. And when we do kind deeds for each other, for our parents, it pleases God. And it sends up a sweet aroma to him. And he is very pleased with us. So that let's remember that. To do good. And to obey God. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for these children that are here today. And the ones that aren't here today. Whatever reason. That you'll bless them. That you'll keep your hand on them. All the days of their life. They will come to know you at an early age. And they will follow you all their life. They will be servants. They will be soldiers in your army. Bless their families. Bless their parents. Lord, help them to teach them the things you have them to teach. Teach them and that they would be true to you all the days of their life. And you would be pleased. And they would be a sweet aroma to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Y'all can go back.